Welcome back guys. In this episode, I'm going to calculate the second best. What does that mean? That means I'm going to find the optimal contracts, optimal packages for the monopolist uh, under the case, under the assumption that the monopolist cannot distinguish, observe the types of the customers, but believes that they're equally likely. All right, so whenever a customer comes into the monopolist's uh, store, the monopolist can't say whether it is the high type or low type. And so uh, what happens is that uh, the monopolist offers this customer probably two or maybe more, but we're gonna look at the two scenario, uh, the two packages, package one, package two. Uh, and then the monopolist says, well, this is package one, here's the price. This is package two, here is the price. Which one do you want to pick? And then the customer is going to pick one of them. All right. So the question is, uh, well, I mean, obviously the first question is how many packages uh, should monopolists offer? Uh, we are not going to answer it, but the answer to this is kind of simple. I'm not going to go into the details of its argument, but the monopolist should offer two packages, only two packages, not one, not three, two packages. Why two? Well, because there are two types of customers, remember? Type one customer and type two customer. So therefore, uh, if you have two types of customers, you have to offer two bundles, two packages. If you have five types of customers, you have to offer five uh, different packages. All right, so that's sort of the idea. Again, why? Uh, let's not talk about it, at least now. Well, the question is, what are going to be those packages? For example, can we, as a, I mean, can, can the monopolist offer these two packages? Here is 16 packs of bottled water. Here is nine pack of bottled water. You know, the 16 is price $16. Nine has the price nine. So pick one of them. So what's gonna happen? Well, let's calculate this first before jumping into the second best. Um, all right, so let's suppose Monopolist offers both package 16.16 and 9.9. Okay, so I'm going to call this package 1 and I'm going to call this package 2. So, uh, who is going to buy what package? This is what we need to determine, right? So if I am type 1 customer, what is going to be my utility if I buy 16 pack at a price 16? Remember, my utility was, uh, utility of uh, type 1 was 4 squared of x minus p. And the utility of the uh, type 2 customer was 3 squared of uh, x minus p. So my utility is going to be uh, 4 squared of 16 minus 16. So what does that mean? That means this is uh, 16 minus, uh, let me check that. Um, yes, so this is uh, 16 uh, minus 16, so 0 utility. Good. What about I buy the 9 comma 9? Well, in this case, 4 squared of 9 minus $9. So my payoff here, my, my, my utility is going to be 12 minus 9, so 3. Well, don't forget, the customers are rational agents. They want to maximize their uh, utilities as well. So which package is type 1 customer going to pick? Well, obviously the second package. So type 1 customer will certainly pick, why certainly? Because it gives higher utility. Uh, we'll pick uh, package two. All right, what about type two customer? Again, don't forget, there aren't two customers. There's one customer, but two different types. So type two, if uh, the customer is type two, his utility, if he consumes the pack of 16, is going to be 3 squared of 16 minus 16. So this is 12 minus 16 minus 4. Oh, okay, it's negative utility. So he's not going to buy pack 1. He prefers not to buy anything. 
right? Because not to buy anything has zero utility, higher than minus four. But there's another option, a pack of nine and pay $9. So what's gonna be his utility? Well, his utility is gonna be zero. So therefore, type two customer will certainly pick package two. Type two uh, customer will pick package two. Uh, well, you may say, well, look, the utility of type two is zero if he buys package two. But if he doesn't buy anything, his utility is also zero. So he's indifferent between buying package two and not buying anything. So why do we sort of think or put here that he's going to buy the package two? Well, for simplicity, all right? So the, uh, the, uh, the uh, detailed argumentation has no point. For simplification, you can always assume that whenever a customer is indifferent between buying a package and not buying at all, he will always buy that package, all right? So the indifferences can be break in favor of buying the package, all right? Just make this assumption, trust me, uh, calculations will be much simpler. And by the way, th this assumption is not really going to change the fundamentals of our analysis. All right, so, Conclusion, well, if the monopolist offers those first best packages, well, what's gonna happen is that uh, both type one and type two customers are gonna buy the package two. Nobody will buy package one. All right, fine, uh, but the problem is what's going to be the profit of the monopolist? Hmm, so here is what the profit will be. Uh, let me write it here. So the profit is going to be the following. Okay, so the profit is going to, profit of the monopolist is going to be the following. Remember the profit function of the monopolist is p minus 0.5x. And remember that both type 1 and type 2 customers actually buy the first package. So therefore, the monopolist profit is going to be one half uh, 9 minus 0.59 plus 1 half. I'm, I'm calculating expected profit if it is high type. And if it is low type, it's going to be 9 minus 0.5 times 9. I'm sorry, this looks like G. All right. So therefore, that's equal to 4.5. Okay. Um, well, let me point out one thing. You may say, uh, but the monopolist is offering two packages. So here in this expected profit calculation, there's only one package produced. What about the producing the package of 16 at a price 16? Well, but this will never be sold. So you may say, well, the, this is not the expected, true expected profit. The true expected profit should be the following. This is the expected benefit from selling the 99 package. But there should be, remember, the package of 16 produced and it's not sold. So it's 0 minus, therefore, 0 minus 0.5 times 16. All right. So this should be the profit of the firm, uh, you may argue. OK, good point. But this is not true. This part is not a part of the profit function. Here is the reason. We assume the following. The monopolist does not produce and then offer the packages. The monopolist first, you know, says to the customer, I can produce two packages. The one with nine packs, uh, nine bottled water at a price nine and another 16 bottled water and at a price 16. Which one do you want to buy? Then the customer says, I'm going to buy nine. Well, then the monopolist goes back and prepares or produces the package and gives it to the customers. So if the customer doesn't pick the 16, the pack 16 package, well, then the monopolist doesn't produce it. All right. So be, be careful about this. Um, so for that reason, the monopolist's profit does not going to have this 0.5 times minus 0.5 times 16 because monopolist will never produce 
16, uh, 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 a pack of 16 bottled water, all right? It will only produce nine bottled water, all right? And so in this case, its profit is going to be 4.5. Hmm, but the question is, can monopolist achieve profit higher than 4.5? Uh, well, don't forget, we, we call this first best, but this is the first best if monopolist can distinguish the types of the customer. So here, what I'm going to do in the second best, knowing that the monopolist cannot distinguish, I'm going to argue that monopolist should actually offer different two bundles. And by doing so, he can actually increase his profit more than 4.5. It's coming up next.